Praise the Lord, church. Good morning. Yeah, I thought Wednesday night we talked about repentance. You know, I want to talk about today something that God laid on my heart. I started studying something else, and, and you know, my mind switched to this. And I want to talk about is water baptism essential for salvation? And, you know, the first thing people watch is they're going to, you know, say you're judging people. People's eternal state is not in my hands. It's in God's hands. I don't know what people know or what they didn't know. They're in the hands of a just God, just the same as I'll be one day. But I just want to see, you know, not what you think or what I think, but what the Scripture says. You know, come on, let's walk through the Scriptures together. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 22 through 27, it says, But the Scripture has concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were under the law, shut up unto faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Yeah, you think, what is a schoolmaster? You know, that's, that's your teacher that, that teaches you something. They bring you forward in knowledge. The law was to bring us forward in the knowledge. It was to teach us of the thing to come. But after the faith has come, we are no longer under the schoolmaster, for we are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. All right, so this schoolmaster, the law is a schoolmaster. It's going to teach us something. Well, let's go down to Hebrews chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. It says, For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things can never be those sacrifices which offered year by year continually make the comers unto their unto perfect. For then they not have ceased to be offered because the worshipers once purged should have no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices there is remembrance again of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. You see, every year they were brought into remembrance. There was something needed. This was a shadow. A shadow is obscured light. It's something blocking the light. You know, it's, it's part way there. But, you know, like the schoolmaster, it was to bring us forward. And it talked about how they come back every year. But there was going to be an eternal... This is leading us into an eternal sacrifice that as long as we stayed under the blood of Jesus Christ, that everything was going to be all right. And let's go back into the Old Testament. And, you know, I thought, you know, I, I'm going to have to teach on baptism. I said, I want to teach on something that's, you know, and it's like this first part, it grabbed a hold of me. I've never seen it before. And I started, tears started rolling when I seen it. Talk about the day of creation. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 9, you know, so you can read it for yourself. When God brought dry land out of water, everything was just water. God created the heavens, and then he brought the dry ground out of the water. Well, if that doesn't show you baptism, you're not looking. You know, the dry ground came out of the water. Water, we, we are made out of water earth where earthen vessels earthen vessels comes out of that water that land it came out new there was something new come out of that water out of the water god raised up newness that he was going to bring life and put life onto it the bible talks about us being raised to walk in the newness of life talks about adam and eve the first blood shed you know they had made them a, a, a a covering out of fig leaves, but God brought them an animal skin to cover them up. They evidently wasn't covered enough. It took the blood to cover them. You know, we need a blood covering. Hebrews, the Hebrews passed through water and it drowned the Egyptians. And you know, I always took the Pharaoh as a picture of the devil and the Egyptians as a picture of sin. And it was chastened. It was chasing uh, the Hebrews all the way to the water, and Moses took them through open, 
or God opened up the water and Moses led him through to dry ground. And I tell you what, old Moses or um, old Pharaoh and his men come through and the water drowned him as they went to dry ground. You know, you think about Noah. Noah went out. He was a preacher of righteousness and nobody had listened. And him, his sons, and his daughter-in-laws got on that boat and his wife. And that olive, or that um, dove brought back an olive branch, led them to dry ground. They went to dry ground. Just like the Hebrews, they went on through to the other side to dry ground. They went through water. It was water that took Noah and his people that washed all the wickedness away. It was Moses. It was water that washed all the wickedness away. Naaman, he had to go down to the River Jordan. He had to dip seven times. You know, he, he wanted to go somewhere better to better waters. But God sent him down to old run and Nate, or up Jordan to get baptized. He had to dip seven times. Not six times, not five times, not eight times, but seven times. Just like God said. You know, people were trying to change things today, but we have to do it just the way God said. And that's what we're going to find out in this word, what God said today. And then it's up to you what you do with it. You know, I know there are people who are not going to believe this and go along with it. But, you know, God gave me a dream one time. And God showed me I was leading my son, another family member. I was leading them lost. If I didn't get out of what I was in and I didn't obey this, obey this is what God's showing me right here. It says, it's a bird in Leviticus chapter 14. There was two birds. One was killed in an earthen vessel, and it was dipped in running water, and then it was set free. You know, I tell you what, the first bird was killed in that earthen vessel, and that blood went in that water, and that second bird was dipped in that, and it was set free. You know, Jesus Christ, the Bible said, God was manifested in the flesh. In that flesh, he was crucified. He shed his blood. And we're a picture of that second bird. We've been dipped in the water in the name of Jesus Christ, and we've been set free. The Bible says who the Son sets free is free indeed. The Son, his name is Jesus Christ. The red heifer and the water of separ separation is for purification of sins. That was, uh, I didn't write down what scripture that was in. The leper, that was in Leviticus 14 and 7. Naaman was in 2 Kings 5 and 14. And uh, there was a rock in Numbers. Um, Numbers chapter 20 verses 11 through 13. You know, Moses, he's took them to the rock and the, at the water of Meribah where the children of Israel strove with the Lord. And the Lord was sanctified in them through this water. You yeah, talk about that rock. Talk said Moses lifted up his hand and with his rod he smote the rock twice. Just the way God said and the water came out abundantly and the congregation drank and their beast also. First Peter, you get down to First Peter, let's skip into the New Testament and let's tie things in a little bit. Second Peter chapter two, verses five through eight. Ye also as lively stones are built up in a spiritual house, and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same made the head of the corner, a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, Whereunto also they were appointed. You know, today you can you can pray and you can say Father and you can say God and you can say Holy Spirit. But you know, when you say the name of Jesus Christ, it separates you from everybody else. The day at Council of Nicaea, that's the name they tried to do away with when they changed the water baptism from the name of Jesus Christ to the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And you know, you can reference that. It's in the Catholic Cyclopedia, Volume 2, page 263. It's admitted that they changed water baptism 
from the name of Jesus Christ to the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost because at that time they were killing you in the name of Jesus Christ. You could come in, heathens could come in under the name God. Heathens could come in under the name of Father. Pagans could come in under the name of heathen, or of God and Father. You know, they could come in under anything, but the name of Jesus Christ would get you killed and it separated you from everybody else. You know, that rock, you know, you stroll down here to John chapter 19, verse 34. And 35, you say, well, brother, how's that go back to that rock with water coming out that took care of the people? It says, but one of the soldiers with the spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water. You see, Jesus was the rock and out of Jesus, the rock, here came blood and water. And he that saw it bear record and his record is true. And he knoweth that he said, saith it's true. Saith true that ye might believe. Blood and water came out. John, let's go down to John chapter, 1 John chapter 5, verse 6 through 8. Says, this is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. It says, and there are three that bear witness in the earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. In the earth, the Bible talks about God was manifested in the flesh. The Bible says God is a spirit. So God was manifested in the flesh. The flesh is compared to earth. So right here we say, and there are three that bear witness in earth in Jesus' body. The Spirit, Jesus was the Spirit in God made flesh. And the water and the blood, when his side was pierced, out forth came water and blood. Adam, when God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, you know, God took a rib out of his side and he made forth woman a helpmeet. Today, the church is our helpmeet. The second, first man was Adam. The second man was Christ. The spear went in his side and out with came blood and water. That's our entryway to the church is the blood and the water. In John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7, it says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, that came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Cannot see the kingdom of God. The Bible says kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So you have to be born again to see the kingdom of God. We scroll down here. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You know, I, I had the blessing of being there when all three of my natural children was born. And, you know, when Caden was born, I was sitting there with my mom and Brandy in the room, and I was eating a grilled cheese sandwich, and Brandy's water, her water broke. And that was a sign that Caden was coming. Well, after he come out, I think they patted him on the bottom, and he started screaming. I tell you what the Bible says, we must be born again of water and of the Spirit. So that means we have to die out 
to be born again into a new person, then we have to be buried with Jesus Christ in the water in baptism. Then I tell you what, we're raised to walk in the newness of life. Then we got to be born of the Spirit. The king can come out screaming, crying. We're going to come out speaking in tongues, just like they did in the Bible. It may not come in water baptism. It may come at the altar. It may come going down the road. But it's going to come just like the Word of God said it did, water and Spirit. You've got to be baptized in the water, and you've got to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. There's no other way. It's the way they did it in here. You know, preachers say, well, that was for them people back then. Well, then God is a liar because God said he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But preachers today, they won't live close enough to get the Holy Ghost, so they do away with it and say that was just for back then. Well, I'll tell you what, they're lying to you. The Apostle Paul said, forbid not to speak in tongues. Paul said, forbid not. You know, I tell you what, when I was in a different way, I'd put you out of the church for speaking in tongues. And God showed me I was wrong. God showed me I was wrong. I was persecuting what was right. But I think a lot of times we're too prideful to admit, well, oh, I can be wrong. People I like might be wrong. Somebody that taught me might be wrong. I tell you what, if this word says a sheep is black and my eyes say it's white, my eyes is wrong. That sheep's black because God said it was black. But we need to humble ourselves down to see the truth. It says that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said that ye must be born again. Not you can choose to. You must be born again of water and spirit. You must be baptized. You must be filled with the Holy Ghost. You must receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost if you want to go to heaven. That's not my words. I read it to you right out of the Bible. In Matthew twenty eight, nineteen, Jesus saying here, this the book of Matthew was wrote to the to the Jews, calling the Messiah a lot in their things. It's wrote to the Jewish people. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things which I have commanded unto you, commanded you, and lo, I am with you always even unto the end of the world. Amen. Jesus said, Go ye teach all nations, baptizing them in the name, singular, of is a preposition, meaning to proceed to or proceed from or belonging to, the name belonging to the Father. In Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6, Jesus was called the everlasting Father. Yo, know, Malachi says, Have we not one Father? Go down in the name of the Son, name singular, of, name belonging to, or coming forth from the Son. You know, Isaiah talked about a Son given. Jesus was the Son. And he also talked about the name of the Holy Ghost. What's the name belonging to the Holy Ghost? Jesus, when he was talking about the Comforter, he said, I'm with you, and then I'll be in you. Jesus revealed that he was the Holy Ghost. Jesus is the Father. Jesus is the Son. Jesus is the Holy Ghost. It's all in him. He is the name of the Father. He is the name of the Son. He is the name of the Holy Ghost. This was wrote to the Jewish people. The Jewish commandment was, Hear ye, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. They knew who the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost was. It was Jesus Christ. There was only one. Jesus, one God. That's all there was. In Mark chapter 16 says, He that believeth... And, and is a conjunction that joins two things. So, evidently, both of them are important. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. So, well, I hear people say, well, brother, it says it said if they don't believe, they're going to be damned. Don't mention baptized, because it don't do you no good to believe, to get baptized if you don't believe. If you don't believe the scriptures, it don't teach you no good to be, to, you know, to be baptized says, and these signs will follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. There it is again. There's that new Holy Ghost birth experience. Preachers today saying that's not what true. Then they're calling the word of God a liar. God said, let God be true and every man a liar. If somebody's telling you that this ain't what that says, read it for yourself. I give you the scriptures. Mark chapter 16, verse 16 through 18. It says... They shall take up serpents, and this ain't talking about snakes. 
You know, the Bible's talked about that called them Pharisees, the vipers, said, who hath warned you from the wrath to come? You know, serpents, it's talking about people that are deception. People speaking with a forked tongue with poison. It says, and if they drink anything deadly, it shall not hurt them. Talking about false doctrine, people trying to destroy their mind. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. In Luke chapter 24, verse 46 through 50, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus is behooved, that Christ suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in Jerusalem, in the city of Jerusalem, until ye be endued with the power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany, but he lifted up his hands and blessed them. You know, I like Brother Johnny says it all the time. A lot of people stop with the Bethany blessing. They didn't go all the way to Jerusalem. But let's look and let's take some key notes here. He says that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning in Jerusalem. All right. We'll get back to that in just a minute. One verse before it. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 through 19, it says, When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say I that the Son of Man am? And they say, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. You know, some people today say Jesus was a Baptist, and yeah, the Baptists, they can't even get along with each other. I was a Baptist, Enterprise Baptist, and they said they were the ones in the Bible. Then I went to an Enterprise Baptist, and, or an a Independent, and they said they were the ones in the Bible. Then I went to a Free Will Baptist. They said they were the, the church in the Bible. You know, the Methodists think they're the ones in the Bible. The Pentecostals think they're the ones in the Bible. The Apostolics think they're the ones in the Bible. But you never, there was never a church name given in the, in the book. You know, never a denomination given. God's only got one church. That's believers scattered all over the world that obey this plan of salvation. You know, people are more worried about the name over the door than they are the doctrine that's preached inside it. You know, ask a man upstairs, said, what, or up West Virginia, said, what do you guys believe? He said, I don't know, but we got a really good choir. He didn't even know the doctrine. He was interested in the name that they were Pentecostal. He didn't even know what they believed. It says says, but who, but whom say ye that I am? Yeah, that's what I asked a preacher. I said, I know I'm saved, but I don't know if God's one or three. And he said, well, how are you saved if you don't know who it is that saved you? And I said, you've got a good point, preacher. And it says, and Jesus answered and said unto him, or he said, Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. The Bible says that everyone that's, that nameth the name of Christ Depart from iniquity. Get away from it. You know, it says, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, Thou, thou art Peter, and upon this rock, this revelation. You know, people try to say Peter is the first pope or Peter's the first this because his name means, you know, rock. But it's talking about the revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the rock. He's the chief cornerstone. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He said, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. You know, he gave him the keys. You know, I ask you if you would come to my house and I would give you my house key. Would it fit your door? No, it wouldn't because it's not the right key. You see, a lot of preachers are preaching a lot of messages. They're preaching a lot of keys. Jesus said he's the door. To get in the door, you got to have the right keys. Well, let's go down here and see what Peter preached to the Jews first. The day of Pentecost. Let's go back to what Luke said, that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. You know, let's take us a spiritual walk down to Jerusalem, if you should say, up here in the upper room. You know, they're there. They're praying. 
It says, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in the heart, and they said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? I'd like for you to watch, ask God right now what you should do. Not what your pastor said, not what your deacon said, not what your parents said, but what, ask God what you should do. Say, God, is this the right way for me? Said then Peter, said unto them, repent. Isn't that what the book of Luke said? Prophesied was going to come, said was going to come. And be baptized, every one of you. And it said in his name. It, right here it says, in the name of Jesus Christ. There's his name. For the remission of sins. That repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name. Beginning among all nations in Jerusalem. They were all here. It says, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and all them that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Nowhere through the scripture is the name is the titles Father, Son, and Holy Ghost mentioned. Acts chapter eight is Jesus Christ. Acts chapter two, it's Jesus Christ. I think it's Acts chapter sixteen and nineteen, maybe. And I know Acts chapter ten, it's next. We're going to go there. You see, Peter opened the door. To the church that day, the church began this day. Nobody will deny that. Peter preached a message because he had the keys. He didn't preach, preach sinner's prayer. He didn't preach, repent after me. He didn't preach, just believe. He didn't preach all this foolishness that's been talked about today in the world. Acts chapter 10, you know, Cornelius, you know, of the, he was a, a good man of the Italian band. He was devout. He'd been praying. You know, God sent Peter to him. Why did he send Peter? Of all all those guys here, Peter had just been wound up, preached the day of Pentecost. They had a big move go on. He sends Peter again. Why did he send Peter? Because Peter had the keys to the kingdom. The Jews had to come in by the keys the same way the Jews did. I'm a Gentile, so I've got to come in the same way that Cornelius and these people here did. Let's see what he said to them. Peter said, to give to him, give all the prophets witness through his name. Whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. You say, well, I believe, brother. Well, do you believe? If you believe, you'll obey. It says, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. As many as came with Peter... Because that the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. How, how'd they know that they got the Holy Ghost? People, they say you get it when you believe. Well, let's scroll down here and look again. It says, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. There's the baptism of the Holy Ghost. There's the born of the Spirit witness. It says, and magnify God. Then answered Peter, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized? that have received the Holy Ghost as well as we. You see, they couldn't just stop with the born of the Spirit. They had to be born of the water too. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. He stayed there, and I'm sure he, he taught them. You know, he expounded the Word of God to them, taught them what they needed to do. But you see, that the door opened to the Gentiles through Acts 2.38. It opened to the Jews, or the Jews and the Gentiles both through Acts 2.38. How can your preacher preach a different doctrine? How can they preach a different plan of salvation than how the Jews and the Gentiles got in? You know, brother said, my pastor told me John 3.16. John 3.16 was under the law. There's nothing under the law can save you. Brother, the thief on the cross, the thief in the cross died under the law. He wasn't under you know, the church hadn't began yet. Peter hadn't preached the first message with the keys yet. They were under the law. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is all under the law. It was a schoolmaster. You know, you see a schoolmaster is to teach you what's to come, the future. You think in Luke when he preached that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name beginning in Jerusalem. You know, to all nations. What happened? Acts, It happened. What was prophesied under the law, it happened the day of Pentecost. 
just like Jesus ordained for his church to begin. And that's the same way to get into the church today. In Romans chapter 6, verse 1 through 5, it says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Apostle Paul says, God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that as many of us that are baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him in baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For we have been planted together in the likeness of his death. We shall also in the likeness of his resurrection. You know, in, in Peter, 1 Peter 3 and 21, it talks, I'll save that one for just a second. But you take this, it talks about us being raised to walk in the newness of life. You think in the beginning, the, one of the first things that God ever did is he brought something out of, new out of water. He brought new land out of water so life could live in it. You know, I thank God for the day that Brother Glenn Jenkins and Brother Johnny Sturgill took me to an old muddy creek and they walked me down that bank and they baptized me and my wife in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of my sins. And I tell you what, when I come up, I was a new man. I told my in-laws, I said, I just, I feel like Ajax couldn't have cleaned me up as good as what I am. You know, I had a, I had a clean conscience toward God. You know, remission means to pardon, to forgive. How can, you know, if I go out and I get dirty, I'm dirty until I wash. You know, when you tell God you're sorry, when you repent, when you start changing, you've repented. You know, you've changed. But you have to go down in the water in the name of Jesus Christ and be baptized for the remission, for the forgiveness of your sins to wash them away. And, you know, I was always taught this, and it never did make sense to me. I never did understand it. And the reason I didn't understand it, because it was foolishness. People were just saying something what they'd been told. It says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21, it says, The like figure whereunto even baptism doeth, doeth mean does, also now save us. Baptism doeth also now save us. Do away with that thought. How, how can you do away with that word? It says, not by the putting away of the filth of the flesh. You know, it's not a bath, but it's an answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And, you know, those of you that know me know what I was. How can I serve God knowing what I was? You know, like I talked about with the red hair for those sacrifices, your sins come up for remembrance every year. Jesus provided himself as that red heifer, as that perfect sacrifice. He was the ram that when Isaiah, when, when Abraham went to, went to offer Isaac up, Abraham said God will provide himself a lamb. He was the lamb of God that God provided. He came down himself and shed his blood. You know, if you've done these things, how can you have a good conscience toward God if you've not had your sins remitted? You know, I've not gave my opinion here. Like I said, I know there'll be people upset over this and want to argue this. I'm not arguing with nobody. This is Bible. If you've not been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, you've still got your sins. If you've not spake in tongues like they did and like I showed you right here in the Word of God, you don't have the Holy Ghost. If you're still living a filthy life, you don't have the Holy Ghost. You know, the Bible says not to take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. If you've been baptized in his name or you claim to be his and you're not living right, you're taking God's name in vain. It's a serious thing. You know, why don't you pray about let God bring you new up out of, out of the water and walk in the newness of life? Pray about obeying Acts 2.38. You know, when I ask God to show me God showed me, God showed me that I needed to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And Brandy, I told Brandy, I said, you know, we were a different, well, somebody wasn't teaching that. And I said, hey, I'm lost. I said, I'm going to hell. She said, you're, you're lost. 
She said, the whole church is in trouble. You're a deacon in the church. I said, I can't put judgment on nobody else's life, but God showed me I still got my sins, that I, st- I got to go get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ to for the remission of my sins to wash them away. And I did. And here we are today. You know, I thank God for what he's done for me, and I thank God for what he's done for my family, and I thank God what he'll do for you if you'll just obey Acts 2.38 and put Jesus Christ's name on and walk in his truth. I love you all, and Lord willing, we'll see you all tonight. God bless.